It's Monday. Heath Spec, it's September 26th. And the word of the day is old. Used in a sentence, it's Eli's birthday today, and he's officially existential crisis years old now. <laughs> he was already doing that for a few decades, to be fair, but now it's age appropriate, yeah, so that's nice. Joke's on all of you. I was born middle-aged looking into the middle distance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a big day. He's, you, you're finally the age that... I was when you first started making jokes about how old I was. I'm no illusions. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, we'll get cheeky about a chess cheater's choices. Mike Lindell will get something in the drive through that's unpleasant even by Hardy standards. <laughs> and Donald Trump declassifies nuclear secrets while drinking a glass <laughs> of water. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, No Illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, thanks so much for covering me while I had a great vacation. So much fun. Much appreciated for covering me. Did you guys manage to fix that, you know, the whole thing with the neo-Nazi theocrats taking over the country? <laughs> yeah, all, all taken care of. Heath. The uh, show's mostly recipes now. Yeah. Cool. In, in a related note, I hope you like Soylent Brown shirt. <laughs> oh, that's so good <laughs> in our lead story tonight we have some news about christian pillow magnate <laughs> and self-employed political operative mike lindell goody mikey had a really bad experience at a hardy's and it's very important that we talk about it he, he's also having a really bad time since then yeah. and also before then mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. But his latest round of failure happened earlier this month at a Hardee's in Minnesota. That's where a national hero at the FBI, a comedy genius at the FBI, that's where he decided would be the best location to swarm Lindell's car and confiscate his cell phone as part of the investigation into one of Lindell's many attempted overthrows of American democracy. And can I say, top four unpleasant experiences Mike Lindell has had being surrounded by men suddenly in a Hardy's parking lot. Okay, that's out of his <laughs> mouth. He did, a, right. he did a lot of cocaine. I, I don't believe him. But <laughs> not for nothing, Mike, <laughs> this would have worked way better for our running jokes if it had been a Wendy's. Okay? Really would have, yeah. All right, so here's the sequence of events. Earlier this month, Mike Lindell said to himself, let's go kill some birds. I'm psyched. So he went duck hunting. On the drive home, he stopped for a delicious lunch at the classic American restaurant, Hardee's. Okay, I feel like he so, took on a sponsor without telling us. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us, Hardee's. So Lindell pulls up to the drive through and he orders a cheeseburger and a chocolate shake, and the cashier tells him to pull forward, and they'll get him the meal in a minute. So he moves ahead, and that's when a team of FBI agents pull up all around his car, boxing him in. According to Lindell at this point, he thought it was either a skit from a movie, or possible attackers, which are just both weird guesses weird. for your Not life. how movies the work. Skit? <laughs> what, are there skits in movies? Anyway, maybe, I mean, people maybe want to attack him. That's not the point. <laughs> Turns out it was the FBI, not a skit. It was the FBI because of, you know, all the crimes. That would have should have been your first guess, yeah. Yeah, right? So Lindell gets out of the car and immediately starts trying to convert the FBI agent's to Christianity and tell them about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And when that was insane and meaningless, he tries explaining to them how the 2020 election was stolen by a dead Venezuelan guy. I've been meaning to talk to you guys. Yeah, right? <laughs> so apparently they let him do his rant for a while. And then finally, somebody at the FBI was like, sir, this is a Hardee's. We're taking your phone. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Mike, baby, if they made it to drive through based sting, they've already heard your election fraud claim. Yes. <laughs> They're beyond that now. Oh, God. And while we're on the subject of national heroes, can we take a second to appreciate the poor soul whose job it is to now look through all the saved shit on Mike Lindell's phone? Absolutely. Where's that Woody Harrelson scene from the first season of True Detective? When you need, it? <laughs> oh, need a taint team for that, for sure. <laughs> So the confiscation of the phone is related to Lindell's connection with Colorado election official Tina Peters. She was indicted earlier this year for downloading information from voting machines and posting it on Frank's speech, which is Lindell's 
uh, social media site being generous with Asterisk. those words. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, that site has just enough functionality to facilitate a crime, but not enough to prevent it from crashing like every other day, yeah. which I guess is the perfect amount of functionality for Lindell's site. So now Lindell is trying to sue the FBI to get his phone back. And the reasoning in his lawsuit is just precious. It's boomer incarnate. He's so confused <laughs> by how a phone just works in general in the universe. According to Lindell, quote, on my cell phone, I have passwords for specific apps and for my company financial accounts that are not stored anywhere else, including the cloud. What? Terrifying. Yup, real bad start. Not having my cell phone has already damaged my ability to conduct my business. I typically receive and send hundreds of text messages a day. No. For that reason, the data collected on my cell phone is exceptionally <laughs> voluminous and multifarious. There's no way he knew that word, whatever. It, multimedia on my phone. He also added, my hearing aids are also tied to this cell phone. And <laughs> also, if I don't log into Candy Crush Saga every day, I lose my streak. <laughs> Go back to day one. Okay, can we just appreciate this is the first pro hoc legal argument for I can't remember my password. <laughs> <laughs> God, just so much to unpack there. We learned that Mike Lindell keeps the only list of his important passwords, like bank account <laughs> passwords, in a notepad app on his phone. No question. With no backup anywhere else. And he's aware of the cloud, but apparently it scares him. He so he doesn't it. do like a password manager. He also doesn't know how to text using a laptop if you don't have your phone or how to get a new phone right. like right away. It's real easy. But the best part is the hearing aid thing. He clearly spent a bunch of hours trying to pair his hearing aids to a new device and just failing miserably, yelling about the VCRs on channel three. What the fuck? <laughs> three? It's three. The TV and the, they both are on three. I just love how long it must have been. And here's one other little detail. Just to put a little icing on the cake, Hardy's responded to this incident by tweeting, now that you know we exist, you should really try our pillowy biscuits. And if you still have a phone, get a free breakfast biscuit in our app. <laughs> okay, I knew it. Good work, Hardy. I knew it. Again, would have been better if it had been a Wendy's, but yeah. still. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. All right, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Policy Genius. So then we just did a little traveling along the coast. Just so beautiful. Oh, sounds like it. Guys, yeah. guys, guys. I know what I want to do for my birthday. Eli, this is a paid ad. If this involves Supreme Court justices. No, 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 no. I just want to tell everyone about Policy Genius. Oh, what's Policy Genius? God, I missed that. So right? Fun. He got, he's got like 40 points while you were gone. Ugh, don't remind me. Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace that makes it easy to compare quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in one place to find your lowest price on life insurance. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Options start at just $17 per month for $500,000 of coverage. Just click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com to get personalized quotes in minutes and find the right policy for your needs. Plus, the licensed agents at Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance companies. They're on hand through the entire process process to help you understand your options so you can make decisions with confidence. Head to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. All right, Eli, that sounds good. But I don't understand why you want to tell everyone about Policy Genius for your birthday. Because I'm going to celebrate my birthday by... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to beep that, right? Oh, yeah, big time. We're going to okay. beep that. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> We're back. Next up in headlines in murder news. You know, usually when I call for you to murder someone on this podcast, we are legally obligated to laugh it off or bleep it out like we did just now. My but, hands right over the button. Yeah, but not today. No. Today, I call for you to get a murdering with a clear and happy conscience for the very fate of no less than alcohol depends on it. Yes. Much like the rarely mentioned Scotch Pocalypse, this time America's supply of apples, maple, and as I mentioned earlier, grapes 
are in peril. The culprit? An Asian immigrant, like your grandma okay. always suspected. Don't, don't I'm worry. talking, of course, about the spotted lantern fly. Okay. Uh, way to get Marky Mark all excited and then pull the rug just right out from under him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, winemakers on Long Island, where this is actually having a big effect, they already have several new slur words for an insect, I'm <laughs> quite certain. They they think of them so fast. They're very creative in the moment. It's hard to notice the slur words with all the existing ones that were already being thrown around, mm -hmm. but yeah. it's happening. Yeah, there's la language developing in real time. So in a plot fitting for a straight to Redbox horror movie, the spotted lanternfly originally smuggled itself into the United States in 2014 on a pallet of South Korean landscaping stone, where, unfortunately, they were able to find a nearby ideal forest and multiply. Now, the bugs have been spotted in four states, and regulator authorities believe their population to be in the millions, growing and spreading as an unstoppable force, which if it goes unchecked, could do major damage to America's tree crops. You watch really bland horror movies. I'm That's fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's scary. Anyways, here's my favorite part of the story. Regulators, governments, and ecological agencies all have one message for you as an American citizen. That's right. If you see a spotted lantern fly, kill the fuck out of it. <laughs> Kill its friends, kill its family, crush the life out of its unborn children if you spot them. And look, I know things are bleak right now in the United States. I know politics is a mess and culture is broken. But God damn it, if there's one thing we're good at in this country, it is genocide. Okay. So get out yeah. there and start massacring. It's the American way. Yeah, honestly, if angry, day drunk, mediocre wine people from Long Island are good for anything, <laughs> it's genocide dealing with unwanted immigrants for mm -hmm. sure. In this case, actual unwanted yeah. immigrants. So maybe right. something good I can come there. Build a fucking wall. Insane <laughs> racism. And in Elections Have Consequences news, I've got some of a local story for you, uh, as it would seem that the latest chapter of Trump's effort to overturn the 2020 election is playing out uh, about half an hour from my front door in nearby Coffee County, Georgia. Now, normally, Coffee County is noteworthy only for the fact that it borders Bacon County, and yet none of the nearby counties has the sense to rename itself Eggs County or Pancake what? County. <laughs> right, rule of threes, people. I'm looking at you, Jeff Davis County, for fuck's sake, you're named after <laughs> racism. But this month, Coffee County finds itself at the center of the most recent voter fraud committed by the people trying to prove that other people committed voter fraud. G guys, can we get some kind of list going of the shit Republicans have accused us of that they haven't been discovered to be doing themselves yet? I, I, I just have a great idea for how to be a psychic detective. Yeah, and I think this right. is a part of it. <laughs> Now, we're going to get to the new parts of this in a minute, but I think it's worth walking you through how we got here. And how we got here is that I live in a part of the country where grown men go by the name of Bubba and Hoss, but still get elected to municipal office, right? <laughs> My fucking congressman's name is Buddy. And, Wait, and, really? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> and, <laughs> he was definitely about to say Bubba, and somebody was like, don't. And he's yep. like, Bubba. <laughs> That's better, right? Now, and, and to give you an idea of how Trump country this is, the next county over is literally named after racism. Yep, it's, named after uh, racism. Yeah, man. so no surprise, pretty much all of Coffee County's election officials are conspiracy theorist idiots. Uh, like, conspiracy theorist enough that the month after the election, the former county election supervisor posted a video claiming that election software could be manipulated, and idiot enough that the password to the election management system server was visible on a post-it stuck to her computer <laughs> in that video. No, my fantasy football team is called Password is Taco. That's the name. It's different. <laughs> what? I'm not a cat. What's happening? Somebody... <laughs> Somebody call Ranjit. <laughs> Do other countries use like hacking and disinformation in the United States as practice before they try Europe? Yeah. Right? Like, like, for a rookie's <laughs> first gig, you have to guess the president's password. Start off playing the game on easy. Yeah, right. Yeah. So needless to say, these jackasses were all in when Trump started blathering about a stolen election. Uh, hell, the Coffee County Republican Party chair Kathy Latham was among the signatories of a bullshit letter claiming that Trump won in Georgia and was one of the fake electors slated by the Trump team to take over for the real ones if Brian Kemp and Brad Raffensperger managed to find those few thousand votes. And that would be the same Kathy Latham, by the way, who can be seen on a recently released video letting two guys who assessed the county's voting machines and copied all the data from them illegally into the building on January 7th of last year. Huh. 
Which is weird because she's also the Kathy Latham who claimed under oath that she definitely wasn't there that day when that happened. Huh. Wait, no, no, I am a cat, actually. Which is better? I don't know what direction to lie. <laughs> I, can, can we just take for a second to acknowledge that, like, this isn't stupidity, it's cheating. Well, right? it's both. It's, it's always been cheating. That's why Trump did it. That's why Kathy's doing it. This, this isn't an attempt by gullible idiots to catch Hugo Chavez going into the office. This is an attempt by evil idiots to undermine democracy itself in the hopes of holding on to their rabid fan base and it worked. Yes. Well, gullible Pretty evil good. idiots. But yeah, yeah, it can be both. Now, so th this video that I'm talking about was actually unearthed as part of a lawsuit challenging the integrity of Georgia's voting system that predates all of Trump's bullshit. Uh, this is a lawsuit brought by a group called the Coalition for Good Governance that was concerned about real problems like Georgia's lack of paper ballots and their history of blatantly abusing the rights of African-American voters. This is so great how this worked yeah, out. Yeah, right? I love yeah. this. So apparently the Trump team didn't know all that. All they saw was that there was a group challenging Georgia's election integrity, and they assumed it was an ally. And as near as I could tell, they basically called them up with a quick confession about all the illegal shit they were doing. <laughs> Uh, Marilyn Marks, the group's executive director, got a phone call. She described this rambling in Amazing. which a, a bail bondsman said that he'd chartered a jet, flown down to Coffee County, and, quote, imaged every hard drive of every piece of equipment, end quote. <laughs> And, and he seems to be expecting her to say, well, good job. Let me know what you found. Instead, yeah. she's like, well, that's a fucking crime. And she contacted the secretary <laughs> of state's office. Okay. You remember when Giuliani butt dialed a reporter at the Washington Post while talking about a crime he did? <laughs> yep. That was smarter than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is dumber. What do you mean you want actual election integrity? Stop handcuffing yeah. me. I'm <laughs> <laughs> this is confusing. Now, in defense of the Secretary of State's office, something tells me they were fielding an awful lot of calls from groups that were questioning election integrity, claiming they had evidence about possible wrongdoing at that particular moment. And pretty much every one of them but this one was bullshit. So they were slow to investigate. Eventually, they did look into it, but just long enough to get a bunch of the county officials to perjure themselves on the record. Um, it was actually, though, the Coalition of Good Governance's investigation that turned up this video. And I should note that there are several damning videos of county officials giving unauthorized access to people visibly involved in the effort to overturn the 2020 election. Right, including the dude who started Cyber Ninjas, uh, that's the company that ran the sham <laughs> audit of Arizona's election and still had to admit Biden won even though they were a sham. <laughs> Just rifling through desk drawers. I know they have Chinese bamboo ballot paper in here somewhere. I know. That <laughs> Hold on. Panda Express. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Interesting. By, by the way, that idiot left his fucking business card on one of the desks. That's one of the reasons why they Seriously? knew something was. Yes, God uh, damn it. <laughs> No, we don't actually know what all these motherfuckers did to the voting machines there, but we do know that they copied all the data from them, including the programming for the system itself. And we have no fucking clue who all they gave that to, but given that they were all central in the effort to overthrow an American election, I feel like it may have fallen into the wrong hands. And and I saw one cybersecurity expert quoted in an AP article liken this to, like, giving the bank robbers an exact replica of the vault they're trying to break into. Right. Like yeah. the, the, the state is assuring us everything's fine because all the machines that they fucked with have been replaced. But that doesn't speak to the larger issue. Yes. That the death of America's violent left allowed fascists to take over and there's nothing anyone will do about oh, it. OK. Yeah, yeah. All Me right. Too. Different. I love story. that he left a business card like he was like, <laughs> all right, my bail bondsman business could use a little. Maybe somebody will you know, hit me up. <laughs> In case I'll you need any here. cyber ninjas. Yeah. So the, now the good news, though, is that this is finally in the hands of investigators with a little more clout than a nonprofit voting rights organization in Atlanta. Uh, in light of the video that directly contradicts several claims by county election officials, the Secretary of State's office is finally taking it seriously, as is apparently Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, in conjunction with her larger investigation about Trump's attempt to interfere with the Georgia election. So definitely more to come on this one. Uh, and uh, speaking of literally any story about American politics in the last six years, this would be a great time to tell you about our other sponsor this week, BetterHelp. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Dude, I'm just going to the bathroom. No, Relax. Bandon, Bandon. Hey, guys, Easy. Heath, Heath, why is Eli clinging to your legs? Yeah, he's dealing with some abandonment issues now that I'm back from vacation. You were gone forever. 
I see. Well, look, everyone needs help working through the difficult times in their lives, Eli. Why don't you just try therapy through BetterHelp? What's BetterHelp? Well, if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Plus, you can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists anytime. Wow, that does sound good. Well, when you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can help get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash Skeptocrat. All right. Eli, can I just go to the bathroom, Fine, please? but I will be listening at the door. Listening at the door, yep, as usual. As usual. And we're back. Next up in headlines... We have a very important story about a scandal that has rocked the world of chess. World champion and arguably the greatest chess player of all time, Magnus Carlsen, lost to a kid. The kid is 19-year-old Hans Niemann, so technically an adult, just barely. But Carlsen was not having it. And following the big upset, he made a very vague but also very clear, I would say, accusation that Neiman was somehow cheating. And that's when the world of chess lost its goddamn mind. Yeah, we did. I have very strong opinions about this based on very little information. This is my Adnan getting out of jail, everybody. Get ready for some unbalanced hot takes. Unbalanced. You're part of the world of chess. Apparently, yes. That's what I've always said that. It's on my business. By the way, the the best chess player in the world is a computer of all time. So, like, they all have to deal with that. Yeah, Alpha Zero can beat everybody. That's true. Yeah, but I can (laughs) gently rest my balls on Alpha Zero. And there's nothing Alpha Zero (laughs) Sure, sure. (laughs) Seriously, though, Alpha Zero is, it's rated like 3,500 FIDE approximately. And Carlson's in the 2,800s. It's a a lot. They're way better now. So... This whole thing, it all started at the prestigious Sinkfield Cup in St. Louis earlier this month, where Carlson met up with Neiman in a round three match. Neiman was the lowest ranked competitor in the tournament, and Carlson was the clear favorite, carrying a 53 game unbeaten streak in live standard format competitions. And the champ was playing the white pieces, which means you get first mover advantage and you're supposed to win. So, based on their official ratings and Carlson moving first, you'd expect Neiman to win approximately 5% of the time. And that's what happened. Neiman won. Because things that have a 5% chance of happening do sometimes happen. Once a 20 or so, yeah. Despite that fact of the universe, and despite Carlson making at least two pretty big mistakes during the game, the next day, he quit the tournament, which was not over yet. It wasn't an elimination tournament. He was still in it. He quit the tournament, and he tweeted a video of soccer manager Jose Marino saying... I prefer not to speak. If I speak, I'm in big trouble. And that video of Marino was following a game in which questionable officiating might have swayed the result. So everybody assumed that Carlson had reason to believe that Neiman was cheating somehow. Yeah, like, you know how there's a some percentage chance that I would beat Mike Tyson in a boxing match, but you might have a few questions? It's like that, (laughs) cheater. She <laughs> uh, and, uh, Eli, the Jaguars and the Jets won last Sunday. Maybe just yeah. win loss odds took a week off. Right. The Giants went two and out to start yeah. the season. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. <laughs> the Lions Also, won- Neiman is a professional chess player. He's like ranked in the top fifty in the world. You're not in the top fifty boxers. I'm not in the even world. in the top fifty people in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so So in response to the scandal, chess nerds all over the world. I've spent the last few weeks screaming into microphones like they're backstage at WWE SummerSlam (laughs) offering their hot takes, Mm -hmm. which is extremely entertaining. Got to be fair. Instead of, you know, I'm going to break his face when I get into the ring. It was like he prepped for the G3 Nimzo up to 20 moves. Liar. (laughs) Fucking liar. Carlson never goes G3. So here's the basic idea behind all the speculation. The attacks on Neiman are claiming that he fed the live game into a computer as it was happening, and then he got signaled about the best computer-generated move. One popular theory is that he had a friend watching the broadcast of the game done by the tournament and then running those moves through the software and then sending Neiman the next move with a buzzer system embedded inside remote control anal beads. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, it, it could also be, you know any other device that's not ass-based, yep. but that's kind of boring, so it's mostly about the anal beads okay. speculation. But to be fair, though, 
He literally couldn't explain his chess after the game, right? That's he, true. He won. That's true. It and the really interviewer bad. came over and he was like, hey, <laughs> hell of a game, man. You beat the world champions 53 game streak. And he's been the champion for the last 10 years. And Hans was like, yep. The chest speaks for itself, and then he ran away. Yeah. Poof. Smoke bomb <laughs> dives into a bush. Yeah, you it was rough. The, the finish line interview with that lady who ran the last half mile of the Boston Marathon and pretended that she won. Right? It was like that, <laughs> but less out of breath. Yeah. And then I, I ran faster than everybody else. Yeah, so the other big part of the cheating theory is based on Neiman's playing history. And it is worth noting that Neiman is, in fact, a cheater. Yes! He got caught at least twice using software during raided online matches. They were both when he was a kid, like extra kid, once when he was 12 and once when he was 16. Oh, way and, back three years ago. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, one of them was pretty recent. But <laughs> he admits that. He admits he did cheat those two times, but never again did he ever cheat. Mm -hmm. Well, based on that history, critics decided to check out his more recent playing record, looking for patterns that would suggest more cheating. For example, they looked at his performance in events that were broadcast live by the tournament versus events that were not broadcast. If he did way better at the broadcast events, it might fit with the anal beads theory. And some people actually did find a pattern like that. But here's the thing. No, they didn't. Not really. Almost everybody sucks at doing statistics. Yeah. Like, everybody's really bad. Even chess people who you'd expect to be pretty solid on math. Right? Yeah. So pretty much everything they found was meaningless in terms of actual proof. And that lack of proof was backed up by the world's leading expert in chess cheating, named Ken Regan, who works for chess.com. He's also a mathematician and a professor of computer science. He knows what he's doing. Regan ran the numbers and showed that Neiman's moves over the last few years were matching up with ideal computer moves at pretty much exactly the rate you would expect from someone who's not cheating. So maybe, 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 just maybe, the best chess players in the world, like Magnus Carlsen, become raving lunatics if they lose to a child. And... That lines up with the comments from Grandmaster Levon Aronian, who said right after this tournament that young players get accused of cheating all the time, adding, quote, all of my colleagues are pretty much paranoid. Okay, but he had never played G3 before, and then he prepped <laughs> enough to try. You don't get good at chess, Heath. No yeah. one just gets good. <laughs> I, I, just, I feel like maybe the known and admitted cheater cheated again is the Occam's razor answer to this one. I, don't <laughs> I feel it's, it's hard not for me to believe that there was cheating involved, but we, we don't have the proof. That's all I'm saying. So following all the anal bead theories, Neiman responded by saying he's willing to play naked in future competitions to prove he's innocent. <laughs> and whether or not any official chess tournaments decide to go with that, he might make some extra money along the way. Because last week, a cam site called Strip Chat <laughs> offered Hans Neiman one million dollars to do a fully naked broadcast of a rematch with Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, the one sport we get people to start agreeing to play naked, and it is not the one we. Yeah, ask very for. bottom <laughs> of that. Well, to, right, Speak right after bowling, right after professional bowling. Yeah. <laughs> also, but the the claim is that he's receiving signals from something inside his ass. Right. I don't right. see how being yep. naked. If he agrees to play mid colonoscopy, <laughs> I'm impressed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. One other detail here. Since the big upset at the Sink Field Cup, Carlson and Neiman were matched up one other time in a remote tournament last week. After one move, Carlson turned off his camera and resigned. Then he released a statement that said, I'm very impressed by Neiman's play, and I think his mentor, Maxime Dlugi, must have been doing a great job. Which sounds kind of like a nice thing to say there, but Maxim Dlugi was banned from chess.com after they found evidence he was cheating during a tournament in 2017. So yes! even more shade from Magnus Carlsen. But regardless of everyone's opinion on the cheating, the general consensus is that a big scandal is bad for the game. And here's the thing. I'm feeling the exact opposite. Right? This is amazing for chess. <laughs> We're all talking about amazing. It. Everybody's talking about it. And if ESPN starts covering chess like it's pro wrestling and we get to watch naked geniuses just dripping with oil showing their open ass to the camera during the game <laughs> whilst doing a colonoscopy that's a big win for chess i am on board anyway bottom line bottom line it's definitely po yeah and board <laughs> board there's also oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> bottom line <laughs> it's definitely possible that neiman cheated absolutely possible but as of now there's no direct evidence that he cheated and if he managed to beat the greatest chess player of all time, 
using anal beads. I mean, hats off. Yeah, like, yeah, I got to give fair. you some credit there. But slowly, don't take your hat off too fast, Hans. Okay. It makes a real <laughs> mess, buddy. And in Chimpan, now you see me. <laughs> I can't what? tell you how much time I spent trying to think of a movie. Please monkey. don't. Just don't. The cool. Pun- okay. Anyways, for the first time in world history, according to someone quoted in this article, not one, but three chimpanzees have been kidnapped from an animal sanctuary in the Democratic Republic of Congo in what authorities are calling some pretty serious monkey business. (laughs) Yikes. Hey, Heath, if you need a good cricket sound effect for this ad at level. Oh, I would. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. According to the Suck kid, my cock. <laughs> there you go. There, Start with that. Nice. That's good. I don't think that's thieving. What? That's, not thieving. <laughs> that's what you you're, you're just like you know go fuck yourself after you steal. The- <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Okay. According to the kidnappers, they originally snuck into the young animals confiscated in Katanga Sanctuary with the hopes of kidnapping the owner's children who were Jesus. supposed to be there on vacation. What? But Learning that they weren't there. Yeah, that's real. Settled for three of the five baby chimps in the sanctuary that they've rescued so far this year. You do, do kidnappers just settle for something else? <laughs> I guess, else? yeah. I feel like you just leave at that point. That's weird. Hey, guys. No, I also took a, a Subway Club card with four stamps. <laughs> so, you know, now we wait. Yeah, what? right. Just leave. Right. Well, so what I love here is that their original plan, or backup plan at least, was clearly to take all five of the chips, but they didn't have probably animal carriers that were expecting to come away with kids. So there was probably a really slapstick ass moment when they realized that three was going to be the limit. Yeah. They're pushing right? one into the cage while it's climbing out. God, let's just do three. Let's just do three. There must be a better way. <laughs> So, sadly, when interviewed by CNN, the owners of the sanctuary have said they're unable to pay the ransom demanded by the kidnappers, and even if they were able to pay it, they can't afford to set a precedent like this at animal sanctuaries, which, of course, leaves us with only one conclusion. We need a monkey with a very special set of skills oh, Jesus. to show these kidnappers <laughs> they were mistaken. I'm talking, of course, yep. about Lemur Neeson. It's not a, not a monkey. Oh, okay, you're done with your news story that and our it, new show? That was my That turn. was it? Cool. <laughs> right. In other news, we have to mention this at least once. Donald Trump went on national television last week and said into a camera, I can declassify nuclear secrets by thinking it. Yep. With he did. my mind. <laughs> he did say there were other stories available. I we chose this is where we live. to focus on what we chose to focus on here. <laughs> and finally tonight, in Shootin' Roids news. I'll admit that my last NASA story was a bit of a bust. Four weeks ago, I talked about the upcoming Artemis launch, which was originally slated for the day that episode came out and is currently scheduled for eventually. Um, yeah, by eventually, I mean tomorrow, but who knows? I mean, I, I, I know there are super smart technical reasons for it or whatever, but they scrubbed the last launch because their spaceship was leaking. So I'm not holding my breath. That being said, there is another NASA mission going on right now, and it's slated to take a pretty awesome step on the day that this episode comes out. So, at the non-existent risk of passing on the Skeptocrat space jinx, I want to close things off tonight by talking about NASA's effort to give an asteroid a teeny little nudge. All right, so yeah, we ran the numbers. We decided to give the asteroid two for flinching. Yes. that's the pl- <laughs> I'm a rocket scientist. That is our plan. Yeah, and you know what, Noah, just for you... I went ahead and sold all my NASA stock, which, as regular listeners will know, means they will succeed beyond their wildest dreams for the next three years. <laughs> there so, you go. Yeah. I think those would just be treasury bonds, right? Sorry, it was leaky. That yeah, bothers was, me, too. It was, yeah. It feels like duct tape is involved and they're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now this is the story of a little spaceship called the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, and it's about the size of a golf cart, or 1.8 meters by 1.9 meters by 2.6 meters. Wow, internet meme, that is more efficient. Anyway, <laughs> this little craft is uh, destined to meet up with a football field-sized asteroid called Dimorphos at 7.14 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, the day that this episode comes out. Uh, but it's not planning on landing so much as crashing headlong into the motherfucker at 15,000 miles an hour. Uh, the hope is that the collision will slightly shift the asteroid's trajectory, which is a handy thing to have tried at least once in the event that we spot a big asteroid (laughs) heading our way. 
Okay, no, I ran the numbers again. We need a little ship with a laser right in the middle area. And it spins. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Sorry. It shouldn't move. Just No, spin. it's got to move. It's You can move to the top right. You can wrap around the screen. Okay. Well, we'll have it move. Good point. I'll run the numbers again. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're telling me that NASA is asking us to believe that we're seeing if we can move an asteroid with a golf cart just in case? Yes, just in case. Exactly. It's totally headed for Earth. <laughs> I just want to throw that out there right now. It's absolutely headed for Earth. It Wrong. wouldn't Don't look matter. Up. It's so small. Now, Dimorphos is actually part of a two-body system. Uh, it orbits a much larger asteroid called Didymus. Uh, now, I know that that means twin in Greek, I guess, but it's also the name of the valiant fox terrier from Labyrinth, so I feel like they should have named it Sidekick Ambrosius. Yet ah, another, perfect. Right, yeah, no, yet another time when astr uh, astronomy's refusal to run their names by me bit them in the ass. After Black Hole, they should have known that they needed somebody else to deal they with They should have called you in. They should have. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, if the mission is successful, it'll nudge Dimorphos's orbit by as much as one degree, marking the first time humans have ever shifted the trajectory of a celestial object. <laughs> Just cut to Donald Trump on Fox News next week. Mm, brain magic. You're welcome. That was <laughs> I moved it. Okay. Well, technically, we all know about the asteroid now. So if Trump uses his brain magic, won't it become classified? Oh, or there is you it, go. Yeah, very yeah. tough. Yeah, he'll just now, do. He'll shit himself again, and he's he'll go gotta back. Got to explain the rules. <laughs> <laughs> now, so let me be clear. This is a very cool mission, and it's a really good idea to get some data on this shit. There are thousands of dangerous asteroids orbiting close to the Earth that NASA has deemed potentially a hazardous. And while none of those are on course to hit us anytime soon, NASA estimates that we only know about ninety-five percent of the asteroids big enough to create global catastrophe, and only about forty percent of the ones big enough to take out like a city. So. Yeah, it's super important that we learn how to nudge them. At the same time, it's kind of terrifying technology to put in the hands of mere mortals. I, I mean, we're talking about the ability to redirect city-destroying objects, right? And human history has shown that not everybody looking at that tech would be looking for a way to aim them away. Yeah. Mm. Now, granted, aiming an asteroid at a target the size of, say, Washington, D.C., is orders of magnitude harder than aiming it at a target the size of everything in the universe except Earth, but even a small step in that direction is one worth being a little bit uneasy about. Yeah, I was going to say something sassy about how silly it is to worry about asteroid attacks when countries have nukes, and, and then I remembered North Korea exists, so yeah, sassiness prematurely withdrawn. Yeah, not a lot of things that can make nukes seem small in comparison, but knocking a fucking asteroid into a city sure could do the trick, yeah. Um, anyway, I, I know we like to close things out with lighthearted stories, so, you know, very cool space stuff, plus we're inching closer to an era where we could rain fiery mountains down upon the heads of our enemies, so good times. Exactly. Good times. <laughs> Everybody wins. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions, thanks to Eli Bosnick, and thanks to all the listeners who liked us on Facebook, followed us on Twitter, and sent us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening, and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skepticrat. Just like King Yam, Jay Reynolds, Mounty of Madness, Aaron Murray. What is a cat? Dear God, please someone tell Matt Walsh about the litter box hoax. <laughs> Mung Sung Hero, Callan, Mockingbird Nation, Kenneth Fector, Cat Wagner, James Gonzuski, David Cagle, Laura Lusby, Robert Muse, Stoned Banana, Grace Hughes, Jordan Perry, Bradley Reeser II, Sarah Cook, Colleen Miller, and the Administrator General of Northern Sweden, oh. whose beautiful dicks and vaginas are great for cheating at chess. Or not. Just try it out either way, if they offer. <laughs> and whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, Godful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slonick of Evil Drafts on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Drafts on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Pop!
Policy Genius is an insurance marketplace that makes it easy to compare quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in one place to find your lowest price on life insurance. You could say... <laughs> I, didn't I love do it. that you breathed I didn't in do so it. loud. I get into it, and that's You're all like, that matters. <gasps> my, just <gasps> must read. Noah, go. Eli, can I just go to the bathroom? Fine, please? but I will be listening at the door. Listening at the door, yep, as usual. As usual. You want to harmonize? <laughs> <laughs> bathroom. <laughs> oh, I was trying to harmonize with the B sound. The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. Membership fees apply after free trial. Cancel any time. Can I be real for a second? That goal you have to exercise and eat better, you really can do it. But nobody is going to do it for you. And nobody has to because you can do it if you have the right tools and a community that cares about helping you get results. And that's us, Beachbody. It's as convenient as your TV or laptop, but you need to decide that you're worth it. Let us help you succeed. Here's how. Go to Beachbody.com to claim your free membership and start feeling great.